Service Boston is a new website. I'm actually just a contributor, so um, you know I can't represent myself as a representative thereof. But it's a uh, it's a it's a new community-based website that has uh, news and events and uh, just uh, ways to engage the Jewish community in Greater Boston. It's affiliated with Combined Jewish Philanthropies. And uh, for the past month or so, I've been doing a weekly column on Jewish entrepreneurs, and it's really starting to take off. I've gotten a lot of great response for it, and always happy to uh, you know help promote other people in the space. Yeah. It's it's primarily meant to engage the, the younger the younger yeah. audience, yeah. people who may not be affiliated, may not have families yet, things of that sort. I'm I'm kind of just just on the far side of that. I have you know two three or three and a half year old girls at home, but you know it's still I I've worked in the Jewish community a lot, and I've been a journalist for 20 years, so it seemed like a real sweet spot for me. You know, uh, this might seem rhetorical in this group, but uh, you know what makes the Jewish community is for entrepreneurship unique. Well, I just I first started a column like this uh, about 12 years ago. I was an editor at the Jewish Advocate, and I had a column that was about the uh, Israeli companies that had uh, offices or satellites here in Boston. And uh, I think there's that just just the you know there's the intellectual capital, uh, the desire to kind of, especially now with the BDS movement, I think there's a great desire to kind of show that there's a lot of positivity coming out of the community and out of Israel, and uh, just that it's not what people may hear. And that there are a lot of great benefits. Um, you know, I, I was just reading there's an Israeli company now that's really on the forefront of driverless automobiles. And that's going to be apparently hard to avoid. I mean, we're, I guess we're becoming the Jetsons sooner than we thought we might. But well, uh, So give us a little bit of your history. How did you evolve into this, uh, this role and what other roles do you have? I started in, in radio when I was in college. And uh, then when I graduated, I couldn't get an on-air job in Boston because it's such a competitive market. So I started writing about music while being a paralegal at one of the big firms in Boston, and uh, none of those points relate. So that's right. Good. Well, that's that's kind of that, none of my points relate. Um, so basically, uh, after being out till two every morning writing about music and then falling asleep at the office, uh, I had to sit down with my dad, who was a lawyer, and he actually told me not to go into law because the field had changed so much from when he went in. And it was a startling moment in my life. I still can remember what I was wearing that day. It was one of the most, it was at Johnny D's, in, the late, great Johnny D's in Somerville. Um, and uh, I started writing full time and uh, interned at some record labels doing PR. And it just kind of evolved from there due to diversity of interest and also at times admittedly financial necessity. And uh, it'll be 20 years October. I've written about 4,000 pieces on pretty much every topic imaginable. And I've also done PR website copy for separate clients. I don't get paid for by the client to do editorial. I've kept that line pretty clean. But um, you know, I, I've basically my, my business card says if it can be written, I've probably done it, and that's really what it comes down to.